Okay, so now we're going to look at how to connect your micro bits and your mini move to your cell phone to use your cell phone as a controller to drive the robot around, excuse me. Um, so all I'm taking today is from this website, wait for it, over here. It's the kittronic.co.uk website and they've done a whole thing about adding Bluetooth remote controller and so really I'm just going to work through their tutorial. Um, from the start I just want to tell you you're going to be downloading the Kittronic Move app um, from the Android app or the Google Play Center. So you're going to start up a blank window and we're going to be using some additional menus, so go with me down here, you click on advanced, you expand it and you go down to extensions and probably is that one there, but type in Bluetooth and I'm assuming it's this one if you add that and uh, some extension will be removed, extension radio is incompatible but do, okay I've, you can see it's added this menu here, but it's taken away my radio one. And the other one I want you to go down and add, type in here Kittronic, K-I-T-R-O-N-I-K, click enter. And you want the first one, I think that comes up called Servo Light or something light. Servo Light, this one. Click on it and it adds it in for you. And it takes a little bit of time depending how slow your internet is and mine is horribly slow and yeah you get in this extension here and so the first thing we're going to do is just look at what to do on start and so I'm going to add in the show LEDs and I'm going to put in a heart so that when we start up there's going to be a heart displayed just because it adds to the fun of it the other thing that I want to do here, let's put this for everyone on the side, I want to click on the Bluetooth app here and I want to do on Bluetooth connected, put it there, and what do I want to happen when Bluetooth connects, I want to show LED and I want to do a smiley face. And so that's just so I know that the Bluetooth is definitely working. So as soon as I start up um, my micro bit and it connects to um, the Bluetooth device and so what is going to happen is I'm going to have activated my Bluetooth on my micro bit and the previous video showed you how to do that um, it's going to show a smiley face but also go back to this Bluetooth menu and I want you to go to here on Bluetooth disconnect what are we going to do then and click on this show LEDs right click duplicate drag it over here and change it from a happy to a sad face that we know what happens and the other thing is we want it to stop we want everything to stop if Bluetooth disconnects we don't want the mini move to be going forward and then we lose Bluetooth and it keeps going forward and we can't tell it to stop because we can't connect it via Bluetooth and I think you click here on the servo light button and you go down here and you click and drag on stop and go over there and so that's the first thing that's going to happen when our uh, um, micro bit start and you can see when I put my mouse on over this a heart appears on the left hand side here when um, we connect to Bluetooth I want a smiley face and if it disconnects I want a sad face and so the next step here um, we're going to go scroll down here and go to control and control is kind of the controls we're going to use via our phone and so you can see there's a few things here, but I want you to click on this on event, click and drag over here and put it down over here. And there's several options down, um, as you scroll down. And we are going to choose this bottom one here, MS D-pad controller ID. And that's your phone, it's a D-pad. With value, you can leave this here um, as any. You can see there's several really several options. Um, I haven't actually um, investigated all of them but you can um, leave the top one and so what this box here is uh, it's going to define what we do with our phone, what we do with this d-pad controller and I just wanted to go back here, this is um, the Kittronic Move in Google Play, you can see what it's going to look like on your phone here, you've got several buttons and we're going to be using 
these buttons on the left hand side and it'll, but I'm just going to jump over here to the website that I've been taking all the instructions from and they've labeled it so we're going to take A on the top and you can see here it says A is going to move forward B is going to move back C is going to move left and D is going to move right and so we need to program it to understand these commands okay so let us define what are we going to do with an I d-pad and we are actually going to use something called logic I know it can sound a bit scary and it's this um, button over here and there's this if or else if um, and several true or false so that's it. when people talk about logic um, I know you think of the word is it logical but there's actually a branch of mathematics um, and that looks at true and false and if and else um, and so we are going to use these functions now. So we're going to use this one over here. So click and drag it into your black box over here so it connects within it. And you can see here that I clicked on that minus and it took away the else. And if I click on the plus, plus it adds it in there. Um, and if I click one more time on the plus, it adds an else if. Okay, I want just to give a real life example of this um, bar here. Um, an example is with my daughter is saying, if you're naughty, you can't watch TV, else you can watch TV. And you can see that it felt a bit weird, because you were expecting me to say, else, if you're not naughty, or if you're good, you can watch TV. But that's not how else works. So else, you kind of, you don't give a condition over here. So it's, if you're naughty, you can't watch TV, else you can watch TV. Now something that I think is a bit more intuitive, is if I push this pl plus button here, Okay, and don't look at the three steps, just look at the first two. This, I think, is kind of what you're expecting me to say. If you're naughty, you can't watch TV, else if you're good, you can watch TV. Um, and that's what you, we're kind of used to having a second condition here, but you don't have to. That's when you would use the else. And you can see if I push plus, I can add more and more. Um, I'm just showing here, you can see I clicked the minus, it took away the else. You don't have to end on an else, you can end on an else if. And so we're going to be using is, if, ifs and else ifs here. And we need to put something in here, because we're not going to just um, put true or false here. We actually want to put a condition in here. So you're going to click back here on this logic um, menu and go to here to comparisons, this equal, and click and drag. Sorry, I let go and put it in over there. Okay, and once you've dragged in this logic statement, we need to put something here. So if something is equal to something, then we get a result. And that, if something is, if you click on, sorry here, let's drag the other way, if you click on this control menu, and you scroll, scroll down here to this event value, click it and drag it into the zero, and we're saying if an event is equal to what? I can admit that after much searching, I have no idea how I got this code block in here. Absolutely none. So I will put a link to my code. Feel free to download it and you can just grab it out of mine. I have no clue where you drag it from. I mean I've tried to drag it from here. I've looked in the control function. I can't find it there. I don't know if it's something they had that they removed. So I have no clue. If you figure it out, please message me. I'm obviously missing something. So let's go back. So if event value, so it's um, this event value is kind of like whatever you're going to do on the phone. So if whatever you're going to do on the phone is push the D-pad, so your phone's button A, which you remember is that top button, let's... So if you're going to push button A, then what do you want to happen? And you're going to go here to servo light and we want it to drive forward. Else if on your phone, on your D-pad, you so take button B, uh, A and you lift it up or you stop pushing it and how I got this here you can see that once I've got it here it's super easy and I can uh, right click duplicate and click on it and drag it over here and you can change to go to the scroll down and look through and here's button A down here's button A up so once I lift button A up then what I want it to do I want it to stop and I click there and I drag onto stop. Sorry, that's a duplicated thing in the background. I'm just going to delete it. 
Okay, and we want to do exactly the same for button B, C, and D. We want stuff to happen. So when on my phone, the event of me pushing something on my phone, and what I'm pushing is button A down, I want it to drive forward. When on my phone, I push button A up or I let go, it's going to stop. So let's add another thing here, else, um, and click a few of them because then it gives you space and it creates enough else ifs. So the next thing along, let's right click, uh, let's actually this big like triangular, what's it, diamond shape thing, right click and duplicate, click on it and drag, and so you don't have to constantly um, change and add this event. So over here, let's say what's going to happen with B, and remember we're going to assume B is this bottom button, and so click over here, drag all the way down, when button B is pushed down, what do we want to do? We want it obviously to go backwards, so let's go to survey light, drive backwards. And again, just right click, duplicate, and it's convenient here, um, to just drag it and scroll down. And we want to change button D, B up. So when button B is up, or not pushed at all. What do you want to happen? We want it to stop. So all I did there was I clicked on stop, and on my keyboard I said Control C to copy, or you just click on it, right click, duplicate, and then drag it there. And similarly, we're going to click on this um, block here, this whole blue block, click duplicate and drag over here and now we're going to change this to C and where's our C, C down and all of us so that we're on the same page, C is this left one so we obviously want it to turn left. So when on our phone we click on C down we want it and let's go to survey light, turn left and similarly let's right click duplicate, drag it over here when C is up, up, we want it to stop. And we need to add just two more because we want to end on an else if. We don't want to end on an else because we actually want to put um, a command there. Again, let's duplicate this. I'm going to duplicate it twice and we can finish with these last ones. The last one here is D. So let's scroll down, when D is pushed down, and the last one is going to be when D is pushed up, or is lifted up, and what we wanted to do, remember D is this right hand one, so we want it to turn right, so go to servo light, drag right, and when it's lifted up we want it to stop, so duplicate and stop, and if you click negative here, hopefully it will take away this last else, there we are. And that's your code, so that's what you want to happen. Um, so first of all, you want it to, when it starts up, to have a star, when the um, power is connected, when your batteries are plugged in, when the Bluetooth is connected, you want a smiley face, if it disconnects, you want a sad face, and you want it to, um, the, the Mini Move 2 actually stop. And then this is what you want to happen when it's connected to your controller. So you want, um, when button A is pushed down, you want it to drive forward, when button A is lifted up, you want it to stop. B is down, drive backwards, D, B, B is up, you want to stop, C is down, turn left, C is up, stop, D is turn right, D up, stop. And that is the sum of your code to get it to work with your controller. So now we're going to save it to our, save it as phone 4. You can see I've had quite a few version, versions of this. And as I save it, it's going to save to the folder on my desktop. And then I'm going to click in, uh, connect in my mini move and, um, and it's going to work. Okay, so this is actually the last step is how to connect everything. And the main thing is the Bluetooth. I'm not going to lie to you, I've had quite a few problems um, getting the Bluetooth sorted. It's quite finicky, so just stick with it, troubleshoot and you'll sort it out. So the first thing is to get the Bluetooth set up. So the previous video I showed you how to do it, but in all honesty, it's changed. I don't know if it's because it's different the second time round, or if they've reformatted it. And um, so I just wanted to show you the new thing that happens on my device. It might be different on yours, maybe it's the same. And so as we did last time, we hold down A and B, and we I put them in my toothpick. And as I put in, sorry, let's do it there. As I put in the toothpick, I'm going to literally hold down the toothpick till my heart goes away. Remember, we put the heart as the startup picture. And as soon as it goes away, I, I remove the toothpick, but I keep my fingers down on A and B. And it made a B sign, then it makes this weird upside down L, and then I let go. 
Now, in the previous video, you would have seen the words pairing come across the screen. It seems to no longer do that, but it seems to be in pairing mode now. I now go into the Bluetooth setting on my phone, and I'm going to click on the search button down here. It's going to search for the um, microbit, and see it shows up here, BBC microbit. I click on it. It has connected now to, and you can see on the screen here is this tick, so we know it's connected. Just to warn you, I've done this a few minutes ago. First time it said to me it could not connect, something was wrong with the code. I redid it and it was fine. So really just be patient. Now I'm going to go into the program. So we're going to go into the Kitronic Move app over here. You click on it, free app. And um, you first of all, the screen might not come up. Click on, these, <laughs> click on these three lines on the top here. Click here on connect to microbit. And you'll see here either your microbit shows up or you click down here on scan for microbit. It should ultimately show up here. Click on it here. It says connecting and now it's connected. Click on the three lines, go gamepad. And on the left hand side, is we're going to click that to make it go left, right, forward, back. Nothing's wrong with my back. <laughs> but yeah, that's how you get your Kitronic moving. Have fun. Well, not your Kitronic, your mini move. Have fun.